All right, today is going to be a quick video. We're learning a new proof technique called an indirect proof. Um, it's very simple to understand, I think, just like the conditional proof. That's why it's going to be a quick video. First, let's get some understanding of how an indirect proof works and why it works. So let's say you're talking to a friend and your friend mentions something, right? Something that you know they're lying about, right? Um, but they keep defending themselves, right? They're like, no, you have to believe me. I'm telling the truth, right? A way to for sure show that they are lying, right, is to agree with them. Say, okay, let's just assume that you're telling me the truth for a second. And then, so you assume that they're telling you the truth, and then you logically reason towards a contradiction. You're like, okay, let's assume you're telling the truth. Well, then blah, 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 and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. But that doesn't agree with this, which you also said you did. Therefore, you must, and since I assumed that you were telling me the truth and we led to a contradiction, you must be lying to me. It must be the case that you did not tell me the truth. So, and we're going to see this in action with our proofs. What we're going to do is we are going to want something. Uh, we'll assume the opposite, head towards a contradiction. And by the way, a contradiction is something of the form of a statement uh, conjoined with the negation of the statement. So A and not a or let's say um a or b and not a or b right that's a contradiction because you have a statement and a negation of itself so we're gonna assume something get to a contradiction and then conclude the opposite of what we assumed and hopefully that will help us with our proof so let's see an actual example of this in action and we're only going to do one example um, and we're going to have two premises. So the first premise that we will have is if A or B, then C and D, then C and D. And then the second premise we'll have is if C, then not D. And what we would like to conclude is not A. <clears throat> now, from our two premises, I see, I don't, I, just do not see a way to conclude not A. Um, and I don't think a conditional proof is really going to get me anywhere here. So that's why what we're going to do is try an indirect proof. So since we would like to see um, not A, what I'm first going to do, I think, is assume A, right? Because if I assume A and then get a contradiction, then I can conclude the negation of A. I can conclude not A and I'll get the conclusion that I want. So let's start with an indirect proof. And like with our um, conditional proof, I need a indent. And let's number this three. We'll assume A, and this is the assumption for indirect proof, AIP. Okay, well, I see that if I add B and make A or B, then I can start doing modus ponens with line one. So let's do that. Let's go on to number four. Let's add a B onto this, and we'll say this is from line three and addition. Okay, now I can conclude C and D. And that comes from lines one, four, and modus ponens. Looks like I'm going to need some more space. Okay, I see on line two, if I have C, I can conclude not D. So let me simplify line five and just have C. So that comes from line five and simplification. And now on line seven, I can conclude not D, because that comes from lines two, six, and modus ponens. All right, I have not D. And if you notice right here, I can commute that. I can commute that conjunction, so that way it says D and C. I can simplify, so we just have D, and then we will have D and not D. So here's something I'm going to do, which we haven't done before, is do two rules of implication, implication slash relation, re replacement. Sorry on the same line. So what I'm gonna do on line eight is just conclude D. I'm gonna say this comes from lines five and seven. I'm gonna say it comes from commutativity, right? Cause we have to commute line five. And then, it, wait, this does not come from lines five and seven, sorry, it comes from line five only. It comes from commutativity and simplification. Um, yeah, so you can do two in one line if it's really obvious, um, but don't get lazy. Sometimes it's nice to just do them all out. Um, I didn't in this case. And now on line nine, what we could do 
is we can conjoin D and not D. So this comes from seven, eight, and conjunction. There you go. And that's a contradiction. So since we have a contradiction, what we do is we discharge our indirect proof like we do with our conditional proof. So in line 10, we got a contradiction, D and not D. We assumed A, and since we assumed A, and that gave us a contradiction, the negation must be true. So what we will conclude now is not A, and that comes from lines 3 through 9, indirect proof. Indirect proof, yeah, there we go. Um, and that's the whole gist of it. That's exactly how you do an indirect proof. It's not a difficult concept. I think the difficult part is probably finding where in your proof you need to use it. Um, and that's not always going to be obvious. You have to make some mistakes. Sometimes you have to rewrite your proof because it just didn't work and try a new angle. But this is a new technique that we can use to help us prove what we want to prove. So if you made it to the end of this video, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. And I hope you learned something.